Hello everybody. Our next camera is the Kodak DC50 Zoom. It's another one from the dawn of the digital era. It's from 1996. It was made by Shinon. Chinon? Anyway, C-H-I-N-O-N. Uh, for Kodak, there's a Chinon that's almost just like this. This one has a slightly higher resolution sensor. It's a Kodak sensor. So it was made by them for Kodak to Kodak specifications. Images are 756 by 504 pixels, about 380K images. It uses a color CCD and kind of like the Apple Quick Take, um, what, it make, what it lacks in resolution, it makes up in color depth. It's got 8 bits per channel, so 24-bit color depth. Not too bad for a, whatever that is, 26-year-old camera. It has a 7 to 21 millimeter zoom lens. That's a 37 to 111 millimeter uh, and 35 millimeter uh, frame equivalent. Uh, the aperture goes from f2.6 to 24. So that's not too bad. It's decently bright. The shutter is 1 1 16th of a second to 1 500th of a second. Um, I don't know what it might change it to if it does, but base ISO, based on a little bit of information in the manual, seems to be ISO 84. It's programmed auto exposure only, but um, this arrow kind of going like this, it allows you to adjust a full stop and half stop steps. Uh, the built-in flash on this part uh, is guide number 10.4. That seems to be in feet because the manual, uh, if your photos are too dark, it recommends staying within nine feet uh, for the flash range. So it's not super powerful, but something this old that actually has a built-in flash is pretty sweet. It has one megabyte of built-in memory, and then it takes PCMCIA cards. These bad boys, they're bigger than a compact flash card. It takes Type 1 and Type 2 of the PCMCIA cards. It has an 8-pin serial port for transferring photos to your computer if you don't have a uh, reader for that card. Uh, it does RS-232 if it's talking to a PC and RS-422 uh, for a Mac. The old Macs, they also had this tiny circular 8-pin connector. And then there's a DC input here. It uses infrared autofocus using these bad boys right here. Uh, that's good for 2.3 feet, about 70 centimeters, uh, to infinity. There's a setting back here. Uh, it's under the autofocus settings, which is a little weird. But the close-up, um, you can focus on something as close as 19 inches, about 48 centimeters. For power in here, it uses four AA batteries and this slide cover that covers up the, uh, there's a light and then the exposure sensor and then the uh, front part of the viewfinder. It's a tunnel viewfinder that goes all the way through the body, but it does zoom with the zoom, but it's not what you see is what you get. So if you use an accessory lens, you're not going to see what the camera sensor is seeing. On the back, it does have an LCD. It's not for previews. It just lets you change some of the settings. Um, use the mode button to cycle through the different settings, and then the select uh, button to cycle through the settings of that setting. It, under the auto focus, it has three dots, which uses um, three different sensors for doing autofocus and then it has a single dot it does spot autofocus 
And then it's got the little flower. It's become kind of the universal symbol for macro. That's your close-up setting. You can't use this, the powered zoom rockers up here when you're in the close-up mode. What they call manual exposure, the exposure compensation, is this double-headed arrow that I talked about uh, earlier. You select that, and then it'll step through plus or minus uh, a half a stop. The uh, flash setting, it def when you power it up, it defaults to auto. It's the lightning bolt with an A, and then it's got just the lightning bolt that's forced on for doing backlit subjects or something like that. And then it's got the circle with the slash through it for flash disabled. If you're taking pictures in a museum or something where flash in isn't allowed. There's a self-timer uh, setting that's good for about 10 seconds. It's got this uh, kind of cartoon of a pencil eraser. And it's a little weird. You use the mode button to go over to the eraser. And then you push and hold this separate erase button. They made it a little more convoluted because you don't get to select whether if the card is out, erase erases everything in the built-in memory, and if the card is in, it erases everything on the card, and each one leaves the other one alone. Um, so that's why they made that a little more difficult because it erases everything. This quality thing over here it looks almost like a battery charge remaining. Um, it's odd because all that does is change the compression. It does not change the resolution. And I'm not sure exactly what they do. Um, they don't look horrible. They are a little bit mushier. And then this other part, um, there's a little camera with an arrow pointing towards the uh, icon for the card, lets you know the card is inserted. And you only get that if you also have an image on the internal memory, and that lets you copy from the internal memory to the PCMCIA card. Indicators that don't really have settings, um, there's the number of pictures remaining. That's estimated, but it looks like it's pretty accurate. So this guy has 27 remaining set to the highest photo quality, and then this one down at the bottom, there's a one, for the picture that I just snapped off. There is, over here, an, an actual uh, battery power remaining icon. In the viewfinder, um, you get a center dot, it's a circle, and that's, you, that's your uh, autofocus spot. And then there's another one to the photographer's right that's kind of a dashed line. And that's if you're uh, pretty close up, about 2.3 feet, and, and that's where your autofocus is. And along with that, there, along this side, um, there are some lines. There are parallax lines. It doesn't parallax correct. And then when you're in the macro or close-up mode, there's another frame in there with the little flower icon that shows if you're doing a close-up shot, keep your... Uh, subject within this short frame. That is about it. I'll talk a little bit more about why I got this guy. When I first started in emergency management in 1996, um, it was a pretty small operation. Uh, we had two Polaroid Spectras as evidence uh, cameras. The team leader for the emergency managers had a Minolta Maxim 7000. This kit uh, used to belong to the Southern Insect Management Research Unit in Stoneville, Mississippi. So along with that, I did get uh, some found photos. There were some photos on the card, which was kind of cool. And it's a fairly complete kit. Got the camera. manuals and CDs. I got the AC adapter and that's significant, I'll tell you in a minute. Uh, I got the 9-pin serial uh, cable. This originally came with a 25-pin RS-232 adapter. A little desk tripod, a bunch of conversion lenses, 
a 0.5 wide angle adapter or 0.65 wide angle adapter, two different 1.5 uh, telephoto adapters, and then a kit of uh, plus one, plus two, and plus four close-up diopters. And these are all 37 millimeter. They match this clip-on plastic threaded uh, lens mount here. It was a bit clunky for me at first uh, because I don't have a reader for this anymore, but I do have an ancient laptop, but it's not ancient enough for this software. It has Windows 98 on it, and this software was Windows 3.1 or Windows 95. Gives you an idea of the age. So I put the card in the ancient laptop, just copy it to the desktop, and then because it's Windows 98, I had to find an old uh, USB drive that's got a format that it can talk to. I think this is a 16-bit DOS format. So then I copy it to the thumb drive, put it on the Mac, and then I've got it. But this guy uses a proprietary Kodak format called KDC. And to make it worse, they reuse that file extension. Later ones were raw, and these earlier ones are um, compressible. They might still be raws. So I was using a, uh, an online converter. Uh, I tried two of them. I'll put those down in the description. And then I found some software called XinView MP. I'll link down below. And the only other thing I can think of is the sensor is awful in low light. So you got to use the flash. And the last thing is I had to use the AC adapter at first. The battery compartment was so crudded up that I could not get it to work. I ended up having to do a teardown to clean it out and re-solder uh, one of the battery connectors. So I did manage to get it working without destroying it. That made me happy. So I'm on to the next camera and I will see you then.